Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today is Reformation Day, and it's a day to talk about what it means to be Lutheran. Because with all of the things that we have to celebrate and be glad about, we have to admit that the divisions in Christendom are not a God-pleasing thing. It's not supposed to be this way. Ideally, there would be one Christian church in Munster. And if we recognize that as the ideal, then we have to ask ourselves, why isn't it that way? And what that does is it invites us to ponder what are the universal things, the timeless things, the essential things, and what are the particulars, the distinctions, when do they matter, and when do they don't? When do they not matter? Those are hard questions, and everybody thinks they have an easy answer. Everybody thinks, oh, it's just as simple as doing this. The fact of the matter is, for hundreds of years, the best minds in the world have been working on these kinds of problems, and it's not just a matter of, well, can't we all just get along, and it's not just a matter of everybody go their own way. It's a hard thing. So today, I want to talk about what is the heart and soul of who we are. And you probably noticed a few things different about the service, and one of the things different about the way the sanctuary is arranged is that the baptismal font is moved out into the middle of the sanctuary. Um, there's symbolic relevance to that. God coming into the midst of his people, but there's actually just a logistical reason for that. Last night we had the preschool and the kindergarten and the first graders here singing, and they're not tall enough to stand behind the font. So we moved it. But I use it as an opportunity to preach from the font because the church was filled with many, many people who weren't Lutheran, but whose grandkids or kids or nieces or nephews go to our preschool or kindergarten. Some were Christian, they go to other churches. Some maybe were hearing the message for the first time and I talked to the little kids about the importance of, of singing out their song. But we started off playing kind of a little game, you know, uh, what does everybody in the room have in common? It was a lot easier game to play because people manifestly didn't have anything in common apart from maybe loving one of the little children that was up here. But we could do the same thing right now. What does everybody sitting here have in common? Well, we're not all well-dressed. <laughs> I, won't, I won't say who I'm looking at. No, yeah. uh, what, what do people have in common? Different ages? We have, I don't know who the youngest person here is, but we have a few quite young people, and we have some who have been around a long time. We certainly don't have our ethnicity in common. Although, just by the historical nature of the case, most of us, or a lot of us sitting here, maybe have German ancestors. A lot of us sitting here don't. But certainly, there's nothing relevant about anybody's race. One of the saddest spectacles in the church is when the eternal gospel proclaimed by the angel to every tribe and language starts to well, this is just the gospel for my tribe or my language. It shouldn't be that way. We are male and female. Some of us sitting here are probably very well off. And some of us are probably wondering how we're going to pay the bills by the end of the week. Some of us maybe are very, very smart and successful in whatever our chosen field is. And maybe some of us were lucky to get a D on our report card. But God doesn't distinguish. Some of us might be beautiful. Some of us might not be. Some of us might be champion athletes. Some of us can barely walk and chew gum. God doesn't go by that. But think of how naturally it comes to you to go by all of those things to go by all kinds of worldly distinctions. And sometimes it gets very heated. 
Some of us, a week from Tuesday, are going to vote for all Republicans, and some of us are going to vote for all Democrats, and we're going to wonder how on earth anyone could possibly disagree with us on that question. But that's not what we have in common. And it's not what's at the heart and soul of what we're gathered around. The one thing that we learn about, more than one thing, from our readings today, that we all have in common no matter what, relates to this baptismal font. We learn from St. Paul, God makes no distinctions. And he's talking about Jew and Gentile. This week we talk about the guy who, who went into Pittsburgh saying, all Jews must die. The guy was filled with hate. Not a God-pleasing thing. Because he had in his mind this ethnicity thing that God doesn't go by. God doesn't go by any of the ways that we divide ourselves goes by the soul, by faith. So God makes no distinction. Why? Because all, every single person sitting here, no matter what, has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I don't care how smart or successful or how poor and struggling. I don't care if you're black or white or, or born in America or born in some other country. None of those things are what's relevant. But I do know this about you. Whether I've even met you before or you're a visitor for the first time, I know for a fact from the Word of God that you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No question about it. That law is something that is a very important part of what we Lutherans believe, teach, and confess. The law that condemns all of us, that says that we are born with this original sin and that we cannot free ourselves. Well, that means that we regrettably have divisions with other Christians who will say, well, little kids are innocent and, and, you, and you, should be, you should wait until you've committed some sins before you get baptized. That's just not true. That's the Word of God doesn't teach that. The idea that baptism is only for people of a certain age is problematic because it's denying something that we all have in common, that we've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that it's not our mental achievement or our age or our ability to reason that somehow sets us up for this. So there's some unfortunate divisions based on doctrine because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So you stand condemned. And some people come into a Lutheran church and they feel, hey man, it's just such a downer because they're always talking about sin and guilt and all of these things that don't make me feel good. Well, that's an important part of being set free. We also hear in Revelation about something that we all have in common. I don't care what your situation is, or who you are, that angel is flying overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to every tribe, every nation, every language for all time, as long as the world endures, as long as there is human history, there is this eternal gospel to proclaim. The law condemns you no matter who you are and the gospel says, here is your righteousness. Here is your relationship to God. It is not your achievement. It is not your decision. It is not your willpower. It is not anything other than a gift. You couldn't do it. You could not make yourself right with God. So God did it for you. And again, that brings us right back to this font where fallen sinners, people who are born separated from God, are born again into this covenant with God whereby we become the children of God. And if we are children of God, then we are brothers and sisters with one another and we have this in common and really nothing else in common. 
Jesus Christ is the thing that holds us together. Jesus Christ given and shed for us. Jesus Christ taking all that sin of every single person who has been drowned in the waters of baptism and by daily contrition and repentance continues to drown that old sinful nature and to pin our hopes in Jesus Christ. That's really what the Reformation is all about. That's really what all those people with grandkids and nieces and nephews sitting up here singing, we're here to learn. And that's really something that shouldn't be so particularly Lutheran, but salvation by grace through faith that we don't contribute to, not with our own works, not with our own good intentions, not with our own power of decision, not with any other way other than by the power of the Holy Spirit to believe. Here's a gift. This is a place in Munster where people gather as sinners who receive that eternal gospel. And we will always have that in common. So, Reformation Day, so often if you read a history book or a sociology book, it's all about divisions. And really, what is a Lutheran? Well, we are Catholic, but we're not Roman Catholic because we have some regrettable and, and unfortunate divisions that we cannot bridge with the Roman Catholic Church. And we are evangelical. In fact, before we were called Lutheran, we were called evangelicals. But that word was taken over by all kinds of other people. And especially in America, American evangelicalism is a very different thing than this free grace through word and sacrament. And so we can't claim that term. It would be confusing to everybody. And we are orthodox with a small o, meaning that we teach according to the ancient and continuous doctrines of the Christian church. But we aren't Eastern Orthodox. We don't have some sort of ethnic uh, prefix to that. But sadly, we have the name Lutheran as though somehow Martin Luther is at the center of our faith, and he's not. But... When, the, when Christendom gets all divided and everything gets messed, messed up, you, you, you kind of have to take whatever name people are going to understand. And it's not just Lutheran, but we say we're Missouri Synod Lutheran because there's other Lutherans that have very different understandings of what it means to sin and what it means to repent. And so even though we can say we share a lot of the same history, we don't share that teaching and, and sadly that keeps us apart. We don't celebrate our divisions, but we insist on celebrating according to the Word of God the things that unify us. The law that condemns us, the gospel that sets us free, and the evangelical, Catholic, and Orthodox proclamation of that thing that the angel is proclaiming even today just as the angel was proclaiming way back in the time of St. John and will proclaim until Christ comes again that you are sinners that you have nothing in common other than that you are sinners and you have the son who sets you free by taking your sin upon himself and giving you forgiveness. And therefore, as people born again in the font and fed here at the altar and with the word of God, we are the sons and daughters of God. And since the Son has set us free, we are free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.